welcome to our service of morning prayer on this, the first Sunday of Advent. If you are able to follow the service, if you have a copy, then please do join in uh, any of the words in bold, yeah, particularly in the prayers. Just a couple of notices. Our main service today is a service of uh, readings and carols for Advent and that will be this evening at Lapworth Church at six o'clock. Uh, next Sunday um, we have uh, a service at 10.30 uh, in the school hall and this will be um, messy church and a celebration of the nativity and the uplifted puppets will be taking part in that service. So you're very welcome at either of those services. So let's just be quiet for a moment as we start our service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So now we're going to light the first of our Advent candles. As we light this Advent candle, may its flame be for us a sign of hope. May its warmth be a symbol of God's love for us. And may it inspire us to be hope bearers people of compassion and integrity as we gather in the name of Jesus who is the light of the world. Amen. Loving God, we give you our fears. Help us to overcome them. We give you our hopes. Help us to bring them to life. May this Advent be a time of new beginnings as we look forward to the coming of our friend and saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for the first Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord Jesus, <clears throat> in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, uh, chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. The Lord said, the time is coming when I will fulfil the promise that I made to the people of Israel and Judah. At that time, I will choose as king a righteous descendant of David. That king will do what is right and just throughout the land. The people of Judah and of Jerusalem will be rescued and will live in safety. The city will be called the Lord, our salvation. And our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, uh, verses 25 to 36. And it speaks of the coming of the Son of Man. There will be strange things happening to the sun, the moon and the stars. On earth, whole countries will be in despair, afraid of the roar of the sea and the raging tides. People will faint from fear as they wait for what is coming over the whole earth. For the powers in space will be driven from their courses. Then the Son of Man will appear, coming in a cloud with great power and glory. When these things begin to happen, Stand up and raise your heads, because your salvation is near. 
the lesson of the fig tree. Then Jesus told them this parable. Think of the fig tree and all the other trees. When you see their leaves beginning to appear, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you will know that the kingdom of God is about to come. Remember that all these things will take place before the people now living have all died. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful not to let yourselves become occupied with too much feasting and drinking and with the worries of this life, or that day may suddenly catch you like a trap. For it will come upon all people everywhere on earth. Be on watch and pray always that you will have the strength to go safely through all those things that will happen and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. So as we think about those two readings we've just heard, let's just take a moment of silence and prayer. Lord, help us to understand your word and learn something of the hope you bring this Advent. Amen. So I wonder, are you looking forward to Christmas? Or does it fill you with a sense of foreboding and dread and I wonder what thoughts are uppermost in your mind. Maybe you're planning shopping for presents or food, cooking, planning get-togethers with family and friends, decorating the house. It could be all sorts of things that are on your mind. But for some of you who are watching this service, there may be a sense of fear and loneliness at the thought of, of Christmas this year. Maybe you're worried about the risks of meeting up with friends and family after all the problems of the pandemic. Maybe you're just thinking that you will be alone this year when many people have others they can meet up with. Reading verse 34 of Luke chapter 21, you could be forgiven for thinking that Jesus is warning us against celebrating his birth. But what he's really talking about is in this passage is his second coming. And what he's saying is that if we watch and pray, that God will give us the strength to cope with whatever lies ahead. He's coming again will impact the whole world and so it's something to which we can all look forward. There's one thing about the run up to Christmas and that is that despite Jesus' words in those uh, verses from Luke's Gospel, the Bible does give us a sense of hope and expectation that the arrival of a saviour will bring. Our readings today perhaps might seem a little puzzling to some of you, in, but we have to look at them in the context in which, uh, the time in which they were written. So don't be too put off. Cleverer theologians than us will struggle, especially with those verses from Luke 21. But let's try and capture the true sense of Advent from these passages. Today is the first Sunday in Advent and it sets us out on a journey towards Christmas. It's filled with a sense of expectancy. Perhaps you can remember that time as a child, maybe a birthday or Christmas, when you're anticipating being given a present and then you try and guess what's inside it before you unwrap it. Sometimes that big surprise is a disappointment. Other times it exceeds our expectations. So Advent Sunday marks the start of the Christian year. The 
those four weeks leading up to Christmas or the beginning of the Christian calendar. So important was the timing of Jesus' birth that men recalculated their calendars at the time from the year that Jesus was born. So every subsequent event in history is now dated BC, before the birth of Christ, or AD, Anno Domini, after the birth of Christ. This was the point in history when men started to take account of God's timing. God's timing does not follow a calendar. His timing is dependent on historical events. So today's readings help us to set the scene for the next four weeks in the run up to the celebration itself. But what are we really celebrating? What are our expectations? What are we hoping for? In the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we're reminded that the promise in these verses is why the Jews at the time of Jesus were so full of expectancy. They'd been waiting for hundreds of years for a promised Messiah who would bring justice to a troubled world. They were actually waiting for a king. And those things that Jeremiah mentions that would happen when Jesus came are all things that our world still needs. We need that same justice, righteousness and peace. How we still yearn for an end to all the cruelty, abuse and misery in the world. But shining out from this passage, there's a sense of hope for a better future. Can we muster our expectations and feel positive about the future of our world and trust God to intervene knowing that he is in control. Today we're bombarded by the reality of an unexpected global pandemic, our unsustainable impact on the planet and planet and climate change which have been in recent discussion at COP26. We're exercised about our abuse of people and people trafficking, our crumbling political institutions. And so it's not surprising that some people find it difficult to muster any positive expectations for our world. And that's where our Christian faith comes into the equation. Sometimes it happens that if we have very low expectations, we can be pleasantly surprised. So let's learn to trust God this Advent and remember that God wants it to be a time of hope and not despair. So what are your expectations this Advent? Perhaps you're keeping them low to avoid disappointment. This Christmas, instead of thinking about what we expect from others, maybe we could try and think about what we expect from God. One thing we can do is to talk to God about the many things that we can be thankful for. We can thank him for our homes, friends and families, and our freedom, which many in some parts of the world do not have. We could thank him for that sense of hope to which we can look forward in the reliving of the Christmas story. We could talk to him about our world and say sorry for how we're destroying it and trust him to intervene. And finally, we can stand back and say, thank you that God is with us right now. Amen. So let's just bow our heads for a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, that you wanted to be with us from the beginning. Help us to accept 
that you want to be there for us, even in the mess of our everyday lives. Thank you that nothing we do surprises you and you are there for us. Remind us all this Advent, when so much seems not to be the way it should be, that you created this world for good. Renew our expectations so that we can see you at work in the world and in our own lives. Amen. So now we come to a time of prayer. And first, a prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, we wait but don't always find it easy to wait, and for that we are sorry. We confess our impatience and our lack of attention to the journey and its signposts. Teach us that preparation is part of the journey and that the journey is part of the gift that you gave us in your Son. You offer us a way to follow, a path to tread, a journey that leads to hope, to joy, to trust and to love. And we confess we do not always follow. Now may we step into this Advent as faithful people seeking forgiveness and trying to follow your path and believing you will be walking with us every step of the way. Amen. And God promises to all who follow that he will take away our sins and set us on the path to life eternal. Help us to hear God's word, know God's forgiveness and feel God's peace. Amen. Now a time for our intercessions. Heavenly Father, as we think about the fulfilment of your promise in the gift of your own Son to save the world you created, help us this Advent to be ready to meet you. Lord, we pray for all who lead and teach in our churches. We remember especially our bishops and archbishops and our governing synod. We pray for the new synod and we pray that you will help all those involved in running our church to be advised and led by you. We pray for our own church and for our church wardens and PCC as we seek to find a new vicar to join us and lead us in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember those hurt by injustice and abuse. May they know your love and support, encouragement and reassurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our families, friends and neighbours, that they may experience the hope of Advent and see that you love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember those who are sick or facing death and pray for them and their loved ones that they may know your peace and comfort and healing. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Lord we look with hope to the fulfilment of all you have done and offer you our thanks and praise. Amen. And we now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, as we end our worship, loving God, be with us all in the coming week. Help us as we start our journey through Advent, not to lose sight of you and the hope you bring. So let us go in hope, let us live by hope, and let us be signs of hope for others around us to see. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always.